Well, hello. Today we're going to talk about furries, but not in the same context that you probably all think right now. Apparently there were some furry hackers that got a hold of some documents, so we're going to talk about a hack done by furries. Well, with the events that took place, I thought I might dive into something a little bit more I, out there in, in what's going on. Um, we, we know what has happened in the America. Uh, you know, we know what has happened in the United States of America with the, the situation where uh, Trump got shot. And uh, this happened literally just before that. This was a few days prior to it. So I was like, you know what, let's talk about this because at the same time, if you've been around the channel for a little bit, um, there is an event going on that uh, I'm being sent to. So it kind of just all goes, rolls into one. It rolls all together and well, I might as well embrace it at this point. Heritage Foundation execs threaten gay furry hackers in unhinged text. I, you know, this is coming out of the Rolling Stone. You have to take it with a grain of salt. The Rolling Stone is not a good source. They always have a activist style spin on them. They, you know what, the Rolling Stones used to mean something when it came to news. They used to be more music and more things like that. But yeah, a newly released log of messages shown by the director at the think tank spewing insults after a data breach. This is absolutely hilarious to me to know that you, the ITs of the world, the ones that go to a furry con, if the plane goes down around a furry con, you're losing all your tech support. And these are the people that are behind your computer screens. Self-described gay furry hackers on July 2nd breach archival data from a site that was operated by the Heritage Foundation until recently on and on Tuesday released two gigabytes of internal data originally collected by the conservative think tank. Now an executive director at the influential organization is hoping, hopping mad, hopping mad, what a choice of words, that he might have, that he might as well invest in a kangaroo costume. <laughs> the hacktivist collective Siege Sect has been engaged in a campaign called Ops Trans Rights, in which it targets government websites with the aim to disrupt effort to enact to enforce anti-trans and anti-abortion laws. You mean you, certain things that are happening down in the states? One state to the other, I, I'm learning a lot more um, about the furries and a lot more about uh, what's going on down in the States with everything that has blown up here in the last, over the last weekend here. It's absolutely insanity what's going on. And I can't help but to laugh at just these types of articles that come out here saying there's anti-trans, anti anti-abortion laws. What has been placed in these uh you know, against these states the the people that are governing the states the laws that are being pushed forward are are more in a different style of thing I, sure in some states they have these laws but it doesn't stop a person from just skipping the border and going to a different state and dealing with it um my understanding of the states is a little bit more fluid if you move from place to place. So generally, in a lot of ways, if you're in these states that have these types of laws in the first place and you're worried about this type of thing, I'm surprised you're there in the first place. I, I'm surprised you haven't moved on to a different state that is more of your political background or your political message behind it. So this is where I, I find a lot of this very hilarious and at the same time, very telling of what's going on. The Heritage Foundation is selected due to its Project 2025 plans, which from everything I'm seeing, they're saying is a blueprint for Donald Trump, but I don't know much about this. I am Canadian, I don't know much about these things. And like I said, it was just, this to me is absolutely funny for the headlines in the sense that you have pictures like this, you have furries, sitting there taking down the government right if you think this if you think this through it's not something that you're going to see very well i mean the, do i give a grain of salt to this do i look a little bit further what kind of rabbit hole is this going to go down it's 
a very interesting story in that sense. Th this material, as the Daily Dot reported, uh, and uh, as the Heritage Foundation now confirms, came from the Daily Signal Heritage Media and Commentary site, which lists one Mike Howell as an investigative columnist. Okay. The former Trump administration official in the Department of Homeland Security is also the executive director of the Heritage Oversight Project, an initiative focused on border security, elections countering, and influence of the Ch Communist Party of China. So now this is, now we have the CPP uh, going against Donald Trump. Is that what I'm reading here? You have the CPP trying to go against Donald Trump, trying to seed the, 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 the seed of that this is all about anti-abortion, anti-trans. How about this? You have a bunch of IT specialists that just maybe happen to happen to dress up as a furry that were able to breach a large heritage foundation that have plans going forward for a situation out there that their plans for next year is going out there and it's now being used as a smear campaign. I, you know, I don't know what to believe. I don't live in the States. I don't have any political ties to it. I just find this absolutely hilarious. Now, what ex I don't even know what Project 2025 is. So, Project Oversight, uh, do they even list what it is here? Uh, after de uh, declining to talk to Howell um, by phone, VO described uh, what it was that they and their hacker furry comrades sought to accomplish. So now they're saying that the furries, in this sense, are communists, not, not just uh, about trans rights, not just about abortion laws, but now they're communists at the same time. The Marxist dogma behind all of this. Communism, Marxism, all of these things, it's absolutely stuff that has bubbled up in the political spectrum. And it's, it, to me, this is just absolutely hilarity uh, that now you, now you have to sit there, like, when you read a story like this, can you take it seriously, is the question. Do you take this seriously as what it is? Or do you sit there and go, so what you're telling me was you let the furries hack your computer. That's the more funny and telling situation of this story. From there, Howell's tone shifted. We are in the process of identifying and outing members of your group, he wrote. A reputation and lives will be destroyed. Closeted furries will be presented to the world for the degenerate perverts they are. Okay, here's the difference of something that I've learned recently about furries. They are not closeted. They are very open and they are very aware of everything they are doing. So if you're saying there's closeted furries are, are going to be open to the world and the gender perverts that they are, well, in the last little bit, I've been learning a lot about furries because of uh, certain things that are, that is, is coming up very soon. And they're nowhere, they're not this. This, this is not what they are. Um, everything I have learned, there is a subsect of a subsect like we have with any group online or in in say magic the gathering or or any fandom we have a subsect of a group that just happen to be perverts and that just happens to be that subsect of a group of people that are part of the world if you if you break down say 10 percent of the world the world are absolutely degenerates well then 10 percent of any fandom is also degenerate and that's where it comes down to that's what i've learned it's not that the entire fandom is that way, it's that there is a very small subject of a subject of the group. It just happens to be that part of that community seems to be overly represented by the ones that speak out the loudest. God-natured creatures and nature's law are vicious. It's why you have to put uh, on a perverted animal costume to satisfy your sexual deviancies. Most furries aren't putting on a costume to be sexualized in them. I can tell you right now. It's the ones that put on the bondage wear that believe that that's part of it. They're the ones that are. And I tell you, in the research that I've been doing, I am disturbed at a lot of the things I've seen, but I am also impressed by a lot of what I'm seeing with the furry connection out there. The ones that actually have, are artists and actually put a, a craft to it all. 
it's absolutely insane. So I'm not going to go too much further into this. I honestly, the story is absolutely right down ridiculous. And I thought it would be something funny to cover on the channel. And whatever this project 2025 is, everything I've seen, it's, it's just another thing that's being pushed out there as propaganda. I might be wrong by that, but I'm also not looking too far into it. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day and please help us. Please somebody help me because <laughs> I'm diving down a hole. I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.